Ah, uh, St. Patrick's Day, the time of year when rivers run greener than a jealous leprechaun and beer flows more freely than a tax refund. Did you know that our dear St. Patrick wasn't even Irish? That's right, folks. He was British, snatched away by Irish pirates. He could have been the first recorded instance of a Brit desperately seeking an extended Irish vacation. No judgment here, Patty. We're all in need of a good break now and again. Welcome to Liquortainment Inc., your haven for all things booze and banter, where we embrace the spirit of St. Patty like it's the last cookie in the jar. And for those of you gearing up to convert your garage bar, man cave, or the shed you wrongly promised would be for garden tools into a Celtic kingdom, boy, do we have a treat for you. Stay tuned as we guide you on how to transform these sacred spaces into a St. Patrick's Day wonderland without having to rob a pot of gold. Let's get started on making this St. Patrick's Day as memorable as the mysterious disappearance of your favorite lighter after last year's festivities. Welcome back to Liquortainment Inc., uh, where we believe every day is a good day for a libation celebration, but today it's all about the green. Let's talk decking out your den for St. Patty's because, let's face it, if you're not seeing green, you might just be green with envy at your neighbor's superior shamrockery. First off, transform your man cave into an Irish paradise without spending a pot of gold. How? Start with the dollar store. It's like the end of the rainbow for budget decorators. Grab every green tablecloth, plastic shamrock, and St. Patrick's Day banner that's not nailed down. Draping your walls with these treasures will make your place look like it's been kissed by the Emerald Isle herself. But don't stop there. If you've got the crafty spirit of a leprechaun, time to DIY like Dublin's depending on it. Green construction paper? More like your canvas for homemade shamrocks. Scatter them across the ceiling with some fishing line and suddenly it's raining four-leaf clovers. And if you've got white lights from Christmas still up, don't you dare take them down. Those babies, intertwined with green tinsel, just became your St. Patty's Day fairy lights. Let's talk centerpieces. No, I'm not referring to that half-finished project car in the garage. Get a few jars or empty whiskey bottles, I know you've got them, no judgments here, and fill them with gold-wrapped chocolate coins or LED lights. Suddenly, they're not just containers, but pots of gold. Fancy, right? Wait, let's add a rainbow in the mix. Streamers, friend. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. All in a row. Tape one end on one side of the room, swoop them down low and back up to the other side. Voila. So what if there's no pot of gold at the end? Well, there's the bar, and I'd say that's better. Hey, ever heard of leprechaun traps? They're usually for kids, but who says grown-ups can't have fun? Set up a miniature one with a stick in a box. Uh, and maybe use a bottle of Irish whiskey as bait. I'd fall for that. Just make sure your insurance covers leprechaun-related incidents. Finally, dress up your drink coasters with felt shamrocks and boom! Your guests now have the luck of the Irish every time they place down their drink. It's like a protection charm against water rings. Functional and festively fanciful. So, don't be afraid to go full leprechaun on your lair this St. Patrick's Day. It's one day a year your love for all things green can't be questioned. Plus, when your clinking glass is filled with something strong and Irish and surrounded by DIY decor wonderland, you'll know you've hit the jackpot. No Blarney Stone required. Ah, the lifeblood of any St. Patrick's Day shindig. The liquid courage, the social lubricant, the elixir of the leprechauns. Now, before you start filling your cauldrons, sorry, I mean your sophisticated glassware, with whatever green dye you've got lying around, let's set a few things straight about a proper Irish bar. First, every garage bar or man cave should pay homage to the trifecta of Irish libations, beer, whiskey, and the art of not giving a hoot. Stock up on the classic Irish stouts. They've got that rich, dark character to remind you of the peat-smoked air of the Emerald Isle, or the inside of a stale beer keg, depending on your romantic inclinations. And let us not forget that nectar of the Gaelic gods, whiskey. Get yourself a range of bottles from the lip-smacking, tear-inducing pot still variety to the smooth single malts that'd make even the most granite-faced clansmen crack a smile. Now, for something truly magical, let's concoct that St. Patrick's Day cocktail I mentioned earlier. I call it the Leprechaun's Lament. You'll want to start with a base of good Irish whiskey, add a dash of green creme de menthe for that minty, fresh misfortune. Splash in a bit of cream because, my friends, those happy little leprechauns are always a bit full-bodied. Mix it with the grace of a four-leaf clover waltzing in the wind and serve it in a glass that's been kissed by a shamrock. What you have there is a drink so gold, guests may start confusing you for a rainbow's end. Remember, folks, a well-set bar is like a well-told joke. It begins with confidence, cruises with style, and ends with a memorable punchline. And never underestimate a bowl of peanuts. They're the unsung heroes, soaking up the spills of earnest toasts and misty-eyed ballads. 
Here's a pro tip for you. Instead of those garish plastic doodads that somehow become everyone's neckwear, label your bottles with festive tags. Because nothing says, kiss me, I'm Irish, quite like a whiskey bottle wearing a tiny leprechaun hat. It's the details, my friends. The details that have your guests toasting to your health and not to your decorating faux pas. So, gear up, dust off that bar counter, brace yourself for the sing-along to The Wild Rover, and prep your liver for a jolly good flogging. Your man cave is about to become the talk of St. Patrick's Day lore, or at least your neighborhood, Slainte. So, you're considering turning your humble abode into an Irish gastropub for a day, are you? Marvelous. Let's roll up our sleeves and dig into the culinary crack that is an Irish feast. But remember, the goal here is to avoid the all-too-common fate of a meal that's as bland as a rainy day in Dublin. First on the menu is corned beef and cabbage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Corned beef? Isn't that as Irish as spaghetti and meatballs? The surprising truth is, corned beef and cabbage as we know it is more American than a bald eagle snapping selfies at Mount Rushmore. In Ireland, it was traditionally more of a bacon and cabbage sort of deal. But hey, traditions evolve, especially when they cross the pond. So if your corned beef is a bit shy coming out of the pot, jazz it up with a mustard glaze that'll make it sing like a choir of tipsy seraphim at last call. Shepherd's pie is another classic that's as comforting as a wool sweater on a chilly morn. But let's not have any of that, what do I do with all these leftover veggies, shepherd's pie. No, no, use fresh quality ingredients, the kind that would make St. Patrick himself bless your spatula. The secret to a pie that'll have your guest's eyes smiling is layering those flavors like a Celtic knot, savory meat, rich gravy, and a mashed potato crown worthy of a high king. Now let's not forget about the Irish soda bread. Pairing the complexity of quantum physics with the simplicity of a scone, this bread can be a sumptuous carrier for all sorts of adornments. Think butter that's been churned by leprechauns, or a jam that sparkles with the magic of the Emerald Isle. And to really plunge your taste buds into the heart of Irish heritage, serve it alongside a nice wedge of cashel blue cheese, because everyone knows nothing screams party quite like a wedge of moldy milk, right? And for a touch of green without prompting your guests to ask if the food's gone off, whip up a side of coal cannon, that kale and potato concoction that's as authentically Irish as lamenting over a lost love, or that last pint you probably shouldn't have had. Finally, let's tackle those sweet treats. Serve up some emerald cupcakes or cookies, but be warned, regulate the green food coloring unless you want your desserts to outshine the Aurora Borealis. There we have it, folks. Prepare these delightful dishes, and you'll have a spread that'll leave your guests happier than a leprechaun doing the jig on top of his pot of gold. Let the feast begin, and let's eat our way through St. Patty's like it's our last meal before Lent. So, let's chat about the quintessential ingredient in any St. Patrick's Day shindig. No, not the beer. I'm talking about the entertainment. It's the yeast that makes the party rise, if you will. And what's more delightful than watching your most curmudgeonly friends succumb to the rhythm of a good old Irish jig? It's contagious, like yawning or the common cold, but far more enjoyable, I assure you. First off, consider converting a portion of your lair into a makeshift dance floor. Not everyone can river dance, but after a drink or two, who really cares? It's all about the effort, not the finesse. Just avoid any overzealous kick that might send a drink flying into the abyss. That's a party foul right there. And remember, entertainment is not just toe-tapping tunes. It's about engagement. So why not host a Wear the Green contest? Encourage guests to come dressed in their most outlandishly green attire. The winner gets bragging rights and perhaps a pint of the good stuff. You'll be amazed at what people can conjure up when the prize is as timeless as a free drink. A game of pin the hat on the leprechaun could add some cheeky fun too. Just try not to pin anything on an actual guest, unless they're game for it, of course. Consent is key, fellas, even on the most mischievous of holidays. Ever hosted a limerick battle? This is your chance. Get each participant to come up with the wittiest, silliest limerick, and let the crowd judge. Just make sure it doesn't devolve into a roast session. Though, to be fair, roasting can be quite the crack, too, in proper doses. Lastly, for a bit of magic, a faux pot of gold hunt could be the way to go. Hide some chocolate coins around your pub shed for a bit of festive treasure hunting. It's like an Easter egg hunt, but more culturally confused. And let's face it, who doesn't love a little whimsy with their whiskey? So whether it's through a jig, a contest, or limerick-fueled banter, entertainment is the secret ingredient to making sure your St. Patrick's party is talked about until the wee ones are celebrating their own. And if all else fails, just remember, everyone loves an Irish exit. It's the one type of ghosting socially acceptable on any occasion. Slainta. 
Ah, the noble pursuit of keeping a clear head when everyone around you is a few sheets to the Irish wind. Now, as much as St. Patrick's Day revolves around the noble art of partaking in a pint, or perhaps kissing the Blarney Stone a few times too many, let's not forget our friends who prefer their pots of gold sans alcohol. For those of you who join the revelry but prefer your brew to be more in line with a pot of tea than a keg of beer, fear not. Why not indulge in a shamrock shuffle? It's essentially just a minty milkshake that gives you the illusion of frolicking through the green hills of Ireland, but with none of the regrettable tattoo risks. Picture this. While your pals are out there questioning the decisions that led them to attempt an Irish jig on top of the bar, you, with your trusty non-alcoholic Guinness or a sparkling leprechaun lemonade in hand, can navigate the waters of inebriation with the grace of a sober swan. And let's raise our mocktails to the designated drivers, the unsung heroes of St. Paddy's who chauffeur leprechauns in training home, ensuring everyone's shillelaghs and dignity stay intact. So here's to inclusion, to clarity, and to enjoying the festivities without the foggy aftermath. May your only hangover be from too much laughter and questionable dance moves. Slainta. Or should I say, cheers to no beers. Are you ready to let the clan know that your man cave is where the St. Paddy's magic happens? Crafting the perfect invitation to your shindig is like trying to spot a four-leaf clover in a field. It requires a hint of charm, a pinch of luck, and of course, a generous pour of wit. Start with a jig-worthy opening line that'll have your guests practicing their river dance moves. Top of the morning to ye, you're summoned to the shenanigans at annual crack. Get scrolling on those fonts that are more Gaelic than a bagpiper on a parade float. But remember, if they can't read it, they won't come. Next, splash on colors so Irish, your invite might just start speaking with a brogue. And for heaven's sake, make sure there's no ambiguity about the celebratory combustibles on offer. It's St. Patrick's Day. Nobody's RSVPing for a night of soda water and celery sticks. Finally, don't just send it via the digital leprechaun known as email. Get whimsical. Use a clover-shaped card or include a sachet of tea. Perhaps even send a tiny treasure chest that promises more gold or gold-colored beer at the end of the rainbow. Whatever you do, ensure your invite is less please attend for polite conversation and more join us for memories as fuzzy as a leprechaun's beard. Well, folks, as we draw the curtain on our St. Patrick's Day extravaganza, let's remember that the only thing better than a pint of Guinness is a pint of Guinness with friends. So, dust off your greenest attire, clasp that four-leaf clover a little tighter, and don your merry-making boots. Now, no Irish-themed shindig would be complete without a limerick or two, so here we go. In the pub, the music's so sweet, as friends gather round for a seat. With a pint of good cheer, and friends far and near, St. Paddy's is hard to beat. Here's another. On St. Patrick's, the green beer will flow in pubs where the Irish do go. With a cheer and a toast, they'll drink the whole coast and dance till the early cocks crow. So as you raise a glass and toast to the Emerald Isle, may your celebrations be grand and your spirits just as high. And whether you're Irish by blood or just for the day, may your St. Patrick's Day be sprinkled with the best kind of crack. Slant, my dear listeners. And until our next round of Liquortainment Inc., Keep those spirits up and your glasses full. Cheers.